We're not going to allow that to happen anymore. We'll snatch your behind off the stage and whip your ass. I see my family on television. My sisters, the queens of the planet. Who are you, sister? I'm business with problems. What is a bitch, sister? And did your mother make you a bitch? Or did the world make you a bitch? They, they put out a movie recently, Menace to Society. Who's the menace? They show little children in the movie. Take a drink. A mother and a father feeding them a drink. This really happens in our life, but it don't happen in everybody's life. Why does that have to be portrayed before the world? <laughs> See, you're trying to do good. Now, some, of the, some of the writers, some of the movie producers and whatnot, you got a good idea in your mind, but you ain't controlling nothing. <laughs> That's the problem. Because the bigger guns behind you say, we can use this. See now, you call it menace too. If I'm John the second, they gotta be John the first somewhere. Well, if I'm menace two, who's menace one? Did I learn to be a menace to society from? That's the hidden menace. That's white supremacy. But now they made you a menace to society. And they spread that all over Africa. All in Europe. There's a new book out by one of our brothers, one of the Crips. It's called Monster. I hope brother's wife is here, Sister Tamu. Very pleased to see you, my sister. Her husband 
a former crip. He's in prison today. By the help of God, he'll be out in two years. He has reformed himself in prison, but he's now telling the world what he did, how he did it, in the days of his ignorance. He's no longer ignorant. He's becoming a wise man. However, the publishers have another aim in mind. So the book is a number one seller in Europe. What are the white Europeans looking at Monster for? Why is it interesting to them? Because through the eyes of our young brother, they are seeing all black people as monsters. And what do you do with a monster? You get rid of him. I saw Luke Skywalker on television recently. <laughs> and my brother was talking about how a Japanese girl performed oral sex on him on the stage this is what we pay our money for you can't take your wife to a movie no more you can't take your daughter to a movie anymore if you want decency Janet Jackson does not curse but in poetic justice, she's cussing. What is that saying to those who admire Janet? That it's all right to come out of your mouth with every filthy word that you can because my hero does it, my heroine does it. I say to you, black man and woman, you're selling out and you don't even know it. You turn on your television, black comedian on. Every third word is that MF this and F that and that so and so this. And, oh. <laughs> you don't give a damn no more how low down you are. How funky you have become rotten you look in the eyes of the world you don't give a damn no more you have lost your sense of shame so you're no longer human beings you have become a race of animals I'm your brother damn it and I love you but I'll be damned if I'm gonna stand by and watch you destroy yourself and our people and our future with your foolishness. The Bloods and the Crips and the gangster disciples and the Arukans and the Vice Lords Soon they will become the army of God and the army of righteousness. <laughs> and we're going to put a stop to your foolishness. You're not going to misrepresent us to the world for a damn dollar from your enemy. We're not going to allow to happen anymore. We'll snatch your behind off the stage and whip your ass.
We're tired of it, and we're not going to take it no more. We got to rise up, black man, and make a clean community and enforce righteousness. We're not going to let slick-talking white men or corrupt black men merchandise our women for filthy purposes. We're going to put a stop to it. I'm warning you now to give you a chance to get your act together. But tomorrow the army will be knocking at your door. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. Because you live in the hood with us. You're being set up. So when an unfair judgment comes down and you go to burning and you take your little pop guns with your false sense of invincibility and you roll out then white folks going to roll in. And since you love blood, they're going to make you shed your own blood. And you will drink your own blood. And the Bible says you will be drunk with your own blood as though you were drinking sweet wine. These aren't the days of wine and roses. This is the day of the end of filth and indecency and the destruction of us as a people. And I'm saying to all our artists, you are the vanguard of social change in America. One song from an artist can do more than a host of sermons by any preacher, probably with the exception of myself. Because I ain't no ordinary preacher with an ordinary message. I'm an extraordinary preacher with an extraordinary message filled with the Spirit of God to transform human life. I'm almost finished. I love you and I will give my life for you to me you are the most beautiful people on the earth I see so much good in you so much God in you but you just need to be healed Stevie Wonder brought more joy into people's hearts with songs in the key of life when he talked into the problem of human suffering. We need more songs like that and less songs about your booty and shaking your backside. And I want to freak you out. We got to stop it. And we got to stop it now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Tell the damn record company. I'm not going to be no funky nigga for you no more. Tell them. And if they ask you where you get that from, say, my conscience is bothering me. God has stirred a fire down in my soul and since God gave me my gift I will not pervert my gift and corrupt my people with my gift.
I want you to clean up your raps. Clean it up. Because each one is playing into an overall picture to show the black people in America as subhuman and worthy of destruction. And when white folks start killing us, there ain't gonna be no outcry because they're getting rid of monsters. They're getting rid of bloods and crips. They're getting rid of bitches with attitudes or bitches with problems and hoes with attitudes. They're getting rid of dope pushers, dope sellers. They put you on TV the other day in an in a Asian jewelry store. Pistol whipping an Asian woman. Pushed them down behind the counter, robbed the jewelry store. Then as you were going out the door, reach over and shot them down. They put you all over the world as an animal. Setting you up for the slaughter. They put you on HBO. Armed with guns. Letting the world know you're dangerous so when they kill you. There won't be no outcry. You're being set up. And you're falling into the trap. Whether you like what I'm saying or not, I ain't trying to win no damn popularity contest with you. I'm telling you, for your own good, this is like a final warning. I may not come back to L.A. again. I don't know how long God will allow me to sound a final call because whenever there's a plane to catch or a train to catch or a bus to catch, when they say final call, it ain't forever. Now let's wrap this up. I want to say this, even if you are stung by what I said, or even angry, go home, and in the quiet of your room, think about it. Because each one of us can do better. I want to put pressure on Paramount, pressure on Columbia Pictures, pressure on agents, pressure on managers, pressure and if your stuff won't sell no more and maybe you'll understand like Michael Jordan Michael Jordan quit at the height of his career and he quit with these words he said I wanted to stop while I was at the pinnacle rather than wait till my skills declined and I could feel a foot at my back Because you that are sports figures and great sports figures, your only time span is the length of your skill. You're nothing but a piece of meat that looks good today, but what do you look like tomorrow when your skills decline? And remember, song stylists. You're only as good to the record companies 
as your latest hit. And when you stop making the hits, no matter how well you used to do, you'll see them. No, don't mess with the sound. Don't bother with the sound. I don't think they mess with the sounds. Me, I, I, I keep banging away and the mic starts falling. I don't want to outstay my welcome. <gasps> but you all are very special. Johnny Gill, one of the finest voices in the world today. Our brilliant, magnificent brothers and sisters, poor Michael Jackson, he's become a god. Michael Jackson is one of the finest young men you'll ever find. Michael Jackson is a very deeply spiritual man that most people don't understand. It ain't what you look like on the outside. It's what's going on on the inside. You say Michael is strange because he finds joy being with children and with animals. But the reason he's like that is because of wounds inflicted by grown-ups who only see the value of your talent and what they can extract from you and how they can cheat you and rob you and abuse you and misuse you. Michael is tired of the world. Michael would rather be with an animal because whatever the animal is, that's what it is. It ain't deceitful. But human beings are full of deceit. So he asked the question, why you want to trip on me? Whole world going to hell and you talking about me? Why you want to trip on me? I looked at his video. I saw an animal and a human turn right into an animal. And you don't know what Michael is saying. Michael don't talk. So you got to learn how to read Michael. Michael is a spiritual genius. I see so much God in that man. And I know that persecution and what he's going through, if it don't destroy him, it'll make him an even greater individual. Some of Michael's family is here, and I want his father and his brother to know that I was in the West Indies, and when I, this stuff broke, and at a certain point, the tears came down my eyes, and I told my son, I said, try and get in touch with Michael. I said, because I hope he's not considering suicide to get out of a world as low down and rotten as this one is. Michael is a sensitive person. And I just don't believe that they would have handled no other white artist big as Michael like they handled our brother. Michael has become a god. Michael is the quintessential performer. And whether you like Michael or not, 
there's something to that man that is deeply spiritual that touches the souls of people and the enemy does not want Michael to ever become political and turn his feelings into words and words into song and songs that will start a cultural revolution so they want to destroy Michael now like they want to destroy Stevie and you my brother we got a classy sister over here that she's so magnificent sister Dionne Warwick To all of you, Martin Lawrence, to all of our entertainers, help me. I can't do this by myself. One of the greatest rappers that is in the world today, Ice T, he's right here. He's one of the greatest in the world. Ice Cube, stand up, Cube. Let me say this, these are our giants. They can turn the world around with a rap, with a song. And all I'm saying to you, beloved brothers, yours is a gift that came from God. And you must use your gift for the glory of him who gave you the gift. And you must use your gift to facilitate the rise of a people who are being crushed. Will you do that? Will you help me to do that? I was a musician and a very good one. I was an entertainer and I was very good. I, was, I worked very hard at my craft. My wife will tell you, I was so disciplined before I met the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And when we were going together, and I was a college student, I came back and some young upstarts <laughs> had said they had stolen my thunder. <laughs> and they were not a top you know, performers in the city of Boston. <laughs> and they sent that word, you know, to me. You know how they do, yeah. you know, when they don't know what they're doing? <laughs> so I told her, I said, baby, I'm going to be wood shedding for a while. You won't see me. Because I knew in order to be great, you have to sacrifice. Yes, you have to sacrifice what you love in order to attain what you love the best. Mm. And if you love success, you got to sacrifice foolish time or time that you spend in foolishness. Mm. Yeah. Not that spending time with my girlfriend was foolishness because I loved her tremendously then. But I knew that I wouldn't be able to feed her or any children that would come from her if I wasn't great in my chosen field. Now, God had given me so much talent, this is the truth, that I thought that I was born into the world to make people happy with my gifts. But I worked hard, man. I practiced my violin six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours. I practiced my singing. I practiced my dancing. Whatever I did, I practiced. You understand me? Yeah. 
If you want greatness in life, you've got to be willing to make a sacrifice. That's right. Unless you're just going to be one of these fly-by-night people that make a hit record and then you don't know where they are. That's right. Because you're only as good in show business as your last success. That's right. Your last hit, and if you don't hit no more, ain't nobody paying you no attention. No. The route to greatness isn't just singing a song. The route to greatness is to study your craft. That you become a master of your craft. Listen, I want you to hear this, please. When I became a follower of Elijah Muhammad, I was in show business and I'm getting ready to break pretty big. Harry Belafonte was going out to, to California to do the movie Carmen Jones with uh, Dorothy Dandridge and he was leaving the Broadway show Almanac and I had gone to Broadway to audition for the part, you know, and, uh, and um, I was just very good at what I did. That's, that's about it. No, 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 no. It's not important. And I'm not trying to blow my horn because that's vanity and it don't make no sense. Because nothing that you have really belongs to you. That's right. It is a gift from God. That's right. That will test you who has received it. I want you to follow me now. We're at the end of this. What time is it? 445. 445? Yes, sir. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Listen, family. I loved my art and I worked hard at it. And when I would play a note that was not right, or sing not to the best of my expectation. Sometimes I would beat my head on a brick wall because I worked too hard not to be perfect. This is true. I'm just telling you about me. When I went to college, Mother Khadija was my girlfriend then. And no woman on that campus could get near to me. So that all the women that I went to school with, they all wanted to meet her to see well, what kind of woman is this? That this man is away from home and we fine and he won't even pay us no attention. Because I didn't go to school for that. I have a purpose in life. And when I was 15 years old, I knew that having sex with women would keep me from greatness. I'm going to say it again, man. Yes, sir. Got all kind of women, they lose respect for you. That's right. Because they got all kind of fantasies about you that you can't fulfill. That's right. So hell, if you leave it alone, they live in their fantasy world. And they'll always pay to see you. Because they always want to see what they can't get. I had women offer me money. I'm not lying to you. It's hell, I don't have to do that. They offer me diamond ring, diamond and ruby watches. If I would just go to bed with them. I don't need no watch. I don't need no ring. Had a woman come to me, offer me. You know, I used to wear these um, Cuban shirts, you know, and, and my, 
you know, I'm just out there. <laughs> and this woman said, I'll make you a shirt of $20 bills. Most Negroes, she was a white woman. Most Negroes would have jumped if she made him a shirt out of pennies. I told the woman, I get paid enough. I don't need your money. She said, you a f I said, one thing, I know what I am, and you'll never find out. I was 19 years old. But I'm telling you how I live. Before I met with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I was a boy of principle. Yes. I was a boy of high character. Yes. And I'll tell all of you, you'll never be nothing in life. I don't care how great your gift is. If it's not supported by good character, you ain't worth a damn. Go ahead. A lying, cheating, conniving person yeah. ain't worth nothing. That's right. I don't care how great your gift is. Yeah. You diminish your greatness by your slimy, slutty character. Yeah. Go ahead. What's the matter? I was in Canada, beautiful black girl. She was a prostitute and she liked Farrakhan. I was a teen then, the charmer. <laughs> and she came to the place where I was staying. I came downstairs. She put all of her night's earnings in my hand. I gave her back her money. I said, oh, sister, uh, sweetheart, I called her. You, you work very hard for this. I get paid enough, which really wasn't no money. But I was a man of principle. Yes. I was in a band, or the leader of my band, and the Jewish nightclub owner knew that my band which supported me he didn't feel that they were good enough so he said I'll double your salary I was making $65 a week way back in the 50s early 50s he said I'll give you $125 a week if you get rid of your band I said I came with him I leave with him yeah. wait a minute I'm not no whore. So don't shake no damn money in my face thinking you can buy me. That's right. And since I know I'm going to die anyway, don't even threaten me like you're going to kill me. Yeah. Because you may have to do that, and I might get you before you get me. Yeah. As my dear brother gave us a very beautiful, very wonderful expression the other night, my dear brother Kalia. And I want you to know I enjoyed every moment with you and your family. Thank you. Thank you. you know, um, so-called comedians, and I say so-called because comedians are very witty and very sharp. They have to read a lot. They have to know what's going on in order 
to really uh, touch people, they can say things that get others in trouble. <laughs> and they can hide under a comic cloth. Yeah. Dick Gregory does it very well. That's right. But he's a giant. Yeah. And so are you. And I pray that God will bless your career and make you very, very great. And that's what this lecture is all about. How to access greatness and not let greatness be a, an impediment yes. and cause our destruction. Come on. Now look, I want to go right to the core here. White folks sit next to you. <laughs> then he start. <laughs> I didn't get it right. <laughs> and then when he get it right, start tossing his hair. Yeah. Then he got the job. Yeah. You out. <laughs> but he grabbed yeah. your gifts. Yeah. Your skills, your talent to make his world. Billy Holiday. He want to be the manager. Yeah. Yeah. Hook in. Suck from. Mm -hmm. You got talented people. Talented sports folk. Talented singers, dancers. Gifted, creative genius. Mm. Working for corporate America. Coming up with ideas. They suck it. Yeah. Make their thing greater, diminish you. Because if he's sucking from you and not adding to you, he's taking from you. Yeah. Are you listening to me? He's been sucking from you That's right. ever since the two of you were connected. Come on. You the labor force. Yeah. He's the boss. That's right. You the singer of songs, he's the manager. Yeah. You the maker of the money, he's the accountant. Yeah. I'll help you manage your business. And then your business ultimately becomes his business. He rules you by your desires. Whatever you want in life, he got it. Because he took it from you. You want gold, he took it. There ain't no gold in Europe. If gold was still in Europe, he'd still be there. He went out of Europe. He found gold in the Caribbean, in Central and South America. He sucked it, brought it back to Spain and Portugal and England and France. Yeah. He came among us in Africa and took the wealth of Africa and the labor of Africa and the brain power and hitched it to his plow. Yeah. And he made you a Christian. That's right. That you may help him build a world on the basis of Christianity that you are not even recognized in. Come on, man. Good God, Mike. 
He gave you a Jesus that looked like himself. So that you could never deny him because to deny him you would think you were denying Jesus or denying God. He worked a work, brothers. Yeah. And so here you are today. He now has machines to replace your labor. Yeah. He now has robots. And you have become an impediment. That's right. I'm speaking now of the masses. If you watch... Tiger Woods comes up and you look at who's managing. Look at Michael Jackson. Look at who's managing. Look at Michael Jordan. Look at who's managing. See? And whenever you see a black artist of tremendous gifts and a black person is managing, they'll find a way to get you out of the way, even threatening your life. Come on. And since you just got talent, but no organization, talent, but no muscle. Yes. Come on now. Say it. Give you what he wants you to have. That's right. And some of you so dumb, you just want notoriety. Mm. So he'll give you notoriety and he'll take the money. Mm. Sing, nigga, sing. Dance, nigga, dance. See? Bill Cosby, great comedic brother, had the number one show That's right. on NBC. He got to the point where he could demand white folk laid in the cut. That's right. After a while, when the ratings begin to sink, they just dropped him. Huh? That's right. Look at our dear brother, the comedian that burnt himself up, Richard, Richard Pryor. Pryor. He was the number one comedian in America. That's right. Look around him. Making everybody laugh, making a lot of money. But what does he have now? How did Billy Eckstein die? Did he have money? No, sir. How did Nat Cole die? Did he have money? No, sir. How did Dinah Washington die? Did she have money? No, sir. No, they don't, they don't have nothing. How did Sammy Davis die? Did he have money? How did Red Fox die? Did he have money? But everybody that managed them are rich and powerful. But our brothers are dead. Our sisters are dead with nothing. Don't, don't you want this kind of thing to end? See the joy of what I'm saying? Look at it. Joy, see? I tell it, fair cat. Oh, that fair cat can show tell it. Go tell it, fair cat. But joy must give way to pain. Yes. To bring forth a new reality. Yeah. And our problem is we love the joy of the truth. But the pain to bring about a break from a bloodsucker. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. To bring about a break from somebody that has broken you. To build something new and greater and more powerful. You don't want that pain. So you compromise your future and the future of unborn generations so that you won't have to bear no pain. Let Martin suffer. Go ahead, go 
Right. Let Malcolm suffer. Right. Let Kwame Toure suffer. Yeah. Let W. B. Du Bois suffer. Huh? Hell, I ain't going that way. Ain't going that way. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Best I can do is put that picture on my wall yeah. and talk about how it's my brother. I remember Martin. What a dream, what a dream. I remember Malcolm. Shut up, you lying hypocrite. You don't know none of them damn men with your cowardly self that don't want to take a stand for your own future. That's the best you can do is put Jesus on your wall. My Lord and Savior. Let's look at you. But you don't want no cross. You want a cross for Jesus so you won't have to carry none. But must Jesus bear the cross alone? Come on. And all the world go free. Yes. No, 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 baby. Come there's on. one for you. Come on. And there's one for me. Yeah. Come on, man. You're not going to sit on no sideline. That's right. Yeah. Nobody. And watch liberation come, damn it. You're going to get off the fence. Yeah. Come on. You're going to come down from the sycamore tree. And you're going to stop hiding behind somebody else's suffering. And you're going to do some suffering yourself that we may go free as a people.